For those of you that have uh, deployed a lead scoring process or program, uh, you do know that there's a lot of art involved, right? It is probably gonna be the last thing that you implement if you've ever invested in marketing automation, only because you need enough data with statistical significance that'll give you good reasons to decide on who the right person is and, what, and which person is doing the right things that actually convert to revenue, right? Typically, that's a year's worth of data. I usually recommend you know, a year or a year and a half, and you can begin to build out a lead scoring model. Now, when you analyze all that information, you're taking a look at all of your contact and lead information, you're taking a look at behaviors through properties that you own, your website, emails, forms, et cetera, and then eventually coming to a conclusion about what are all the things that somebody does before they buy and deploying a model like this. Now, if you do it good, uh, there's some great results. Um, if you do it even better than that, you can actually see conversions double compared to uh, traditionally qualifying leads with your, your, your standard sort of formats. <clears throat> now, if you do it right the first time, awesome. Um, you're gonna have to re rinse and repeat that process every so often. And that also involves time and people, and depending on how fast your business behaves, uh, that can be a pretty daunting task. And for us, you know, especially being Oracle and, and the various business units involved, that became very hard for us to manage. So it, become, it became virtually un unmanageable. And so what we needed to do was to apply science to this. We needed some external validation. We needed something that can do this faster at scale for us. And for us, we started thinking about outside of the people, what are the solutions out there that can actually create some real scientific facts around who the right people are and who are the right accounts to target as well. And that was a, a sales challenge in our marketing team. They also had desires to, I mean, every marketer decides to, uh, desires to get to this, this idea of one-to-one -one messaging. We all want to do it. Um, I think we did a pretty good job in some areas of getting to you know, a automated multi-channel one-to-one -one message, meaning that you'll get personalization in various channels, but it was never the same message. And what we wanted to do is really get to omni-channel, where the same message should appear across all the channels that you're interacting with. And really for us, there's only so much we can do as a marketing ops and sales ops org that we needed AI to help us out. We went through a pretty lengthy process, basically a 30-day pilot, and we decided to choose Mintigo. And so, what does that look like today uh, with us? Actually, I'll walk you through this process really quickly. It, again, was a, a very seamless process in evaluating which vendor to work with and also deploying a Mintigo as well. Um, we did a 30-day pilot on our ERP segment, and the result was actually pretty fantastic. So um, our ERP VP was working on a revised product strategy, and she put a number of resources towards this, this project, and, and they were crunching a lot of data and it basically took them two years to exactly understand what our product strategy looked like in the segments that we're, gonna, that we're going to um, uh, target and also uh, what our best targets look like. We gave that same data to Mintigo and it took them two weeks. That was pretty impressive. And we were able to take that process and rinse and repeat it across various different business units as well. So we signed with them uh, back in September of 2015. Um, we're approaching, I think, a year and a half now and it'll be two years in September again. And I'd like to say that we have uh, deployed Mintigo across Oracle Marketing Cloud, Sales Cloud, ERP, and I think three other divisions as well.